So I wore this short shirt, <laughs> this shirt, yeah, with the back in the front and the front in the back. So now I've got that. Oops. Gross. I'm so so when I was in fourth grade, um, we went to Kaidaz and Kamazar, which is like Kaidaz's gravesite, kind of like it's it's a tomb, right? It's a tomb, and yeah, and and there was a group photo, and we were all on the cube and on the roof basically, and we were standing at the edge, and I was really scared, <laughs> but a group photo was taken, and and when I saw the group photo, I was like. Um, what's Huria doing there? Like, I thought Huria was in Canada now. Um, and then Hira said, no, that's not Huria, that's you. And I was like, that's not me, that's Huria, that looks just like Huria. And, and yeah, and then he was like, well, you know, you were there, where are you in the picture if that's not you? And I was like, okay, so that is me. <laughs> and. So in second grade, uh, Huria uh, sang a song. It was, um, I'm a pretty little Dutch girl, as pretty as I can be, and all the boys around the world are crazy over me. And I, <laughs> yeah, that's all I remember of the song. <laughs> but yeah, I was really impressed by her. I would get really nervous around her. And then she went to Canada and. And then in fourth grade, I was like, I was sure that it was her in the photograph and not me. <laughs> I wish I had that photograph. I really do. Because, well, I was like, well, I didn't expect myself to look like her. <laughs> I, yeah. China, China, China. China. China, China, China. What are you saying? China, China, China. Are we still playing? In 2002, you gave the world stars, but you weren't true. It's COVID 19 time. China, China, China. Let me walk hand how and peace, yo. What I do to you, bro? China, China, China. I'll be your amigo. Share, share. China, China, China. What do you want from me? Hong Kong doesn't want to be a part of you. Taiwan claims it's emancipated. Taiwan claims it's emancipated. I made apple sauce with honey and cinnamon. In 2009, you killed up my shame, paving the way. For international British executions. China, China, China. What is your problem? China, China, China. You kill more people than Iran and Saudi Arabia and the rest of the world. I guess that's your idea of population control. I guess that's how you deal with being the most populated country in the world. for the bread diet, but it's insufficient. China, China, China. 
You killed a British citizen on 29th December 2009. I don't know why, but since then, lots of British executions happening all over the world. And they're still illegal, but they're still happening, and it's all your... Well, you started it anyway. Taiwan claims it's been emancipated and is an independent country for, I don't know, since when. I was there in 2010 for Harvard Worldman. And they were really mad at you for not accepting their independence. What's your problem? China, China, China. You're running a death trap China, China, China You execute more people than any other country in the world In 2002 to 2004 You turned SARS or Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome into a pan. I'm a big fan of wedgie dumplings, yo. Let me Wohan how in peace, yo. Oh, pandemic, and now it's COVID 19's turn. I've been trying to use TikTok, tried to get on to the Savage Challenge. It didn't work for me, not really, and I'm trying to get an audience from there, but it's all local. And it just gives an excuse for my local stalkers to keep bothering me. And not even them. There's like no reach. Oh, China, why can't you mind your own business? Most of the apple fiber is in the peel anyway. <laughs> this is not Rachel's voice, by the way. I mean, this is, this is how I normally talk, but... Yeah, but when I'm doing bimbo, I sound like, oh my god, that was so stupid. And it's, I usually do that to um, make emasculate men who are interested in me. It's like, yeah, I'm like, oh, oh, this is so stupid. It's just, yeah, it is not a true voice. Um. Um, yeah, so, so for example, some. This guy who keeps hitting on me and ignoring the fact that I've rejected him and shot him down and and I don't want to be confrontational, like I don't want to shoot him down directly again because you know I have a Mars and Libra as well as a Venus and Scorpio in the 10th house and there's only one person that I've ever agreed to marry and I don't usually agree to it ever. So and I usually don't reciprocate. And so it's like there's only one person, <laughs> one man that I've ever agreed. To marry, and then, but usually what happens is that there, there's there are these guys who are absolutely sure that because I'm I have a Gemini Moon, I have a Mars and Libra, I have a Venus and Scorpio, and all of these things in my natal astrological chart points to getting attention from people I do not want or like. So it's like so this happens a lot and. My defense mechanism is to, uh, so for example, if the guy says X, Y, Z, right? So um, I mock the person and I try to emasculate them by saying, like, oh, I'm so stupid, like, oh, X, Y, Z, <laughs> and, and, and things like that, just to, you know, remind them of what a bimbo they are and you know, it's not smart to ignore the fact that you, you know, that I've told you again and again that I don't want you cupping my wrist or stroking my back or squeezing my shoulder or whatever it is that, you know, it's really bugging me. And so it's like, there's this thing that's really bugging me and I can't really say it, like, directly. And that's why I go into that. And that's not a true voice, okay? I won that silver medal and not a gold because I gave my first bar away because my opponent had asthma and she she had she'd gotten pumped before. Look, I'm a squirrel. Oh yeah, no, that that was weird. <laughs>
As we learn the Shaka energy, Bismillah, Wadarim, Rabeshali, Sadri, we assume you have able to look at the Sadi of Guru Bali. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to uh, be eloquent. I'm trying to talk about something that, yeah, um, social distancing, that's good. But that's not what I want to talk about. What I want to talk about is being a Muslim woman in this world and being a British Pakistani person who was born British and Pakistani and having being stuck with a so called American accent that I don't really think of as American, but you know, it's just I was stuck with this since I started talking and I've always had to deal with people like well, like being offended by it, like making fun of it, like being uh, mean to me about it, and then acting like I'm the mean one, like I'm the arrogant one, like with the fake accent, and it's just, it's just, it's a very weird thing where, you know, it's like I'm not faking anything, I'm just being me, and, and, and for that I've always been attacked, so, so that's hard. It's hard. It's hard to be honest. It's hard to be yourself when everyone thinks that yourself is a fake persona and it's just, it's not. It's not. In fact, I actually water myself down and try to look stupid and ugly and all of those things. And that's the, the thing that I put on, you know, that's the face that I have to put on. I mean, even like family members. Members I have to appease with constantly trying to, uh, you know, pretend I don't talk like this, and, and and not just that, it's yeah, and it's like, well, yes, I've always had to downgrade myself. I've always had to underperform massively because my, yeah, well, my siblings weren't that smart, so it's like, yeah, I was punished for it because that's what the designated scapegoat's job is to underperform massively, to try to look ugly, to to feel stupid and ugly. It's just like, no matter what happens, I always feel, I mean, I know that I was one of the first batch of 10 selected women who this. You know, I know that I was one of 10 women who was selected to be Pakistan's top model. And I didn't attend it, I didn't go for it. and. You know, I was replaced by somebody else, obviously. Right, they have. Anyway, it's just, it's like, I know I was selected. I've always been called beautiful. But, you know, it's just, I've never really felt it, though. And I've always had this need to make faces, to be masculine, to be awkward. You know, just like, I have to pretend not to be. I have to change. I have to be unbeautiful. I have to be stupid, I have to be ugly, I have to do this to make other people happy and it's just, that's like, that's not logical, like <laughs> I have to sound, I have to try to sound desi to, um, you know, make other people happy, again, you know, it's like I have to sound different. Yeah, do you see it? Do you see my permanent tan line? Like, it's right there. It's just, it turns into a line if I grin, right? But otherwise, you can see it, like, you can trace it from here to here, and then, like, it goes like that as well. And you don't get a permanent tan line without getting sunburned a lot just to, you know, make people happy for me. You know, it's just, it's weird. It's like, what do they want from me? It's like, I'm sorry I was born whiter than you, so now I have to flirt with skin cancer? I mean, <laughs> right, it's like, yeah, you don't get this many lentigenes without getting lots and lots of sunburn. You don't get this tan line without getting lots and lots of sunburn. You, you, you know, it's just, you don't, yeah, exactly, it's just, I've always had to do this. And I know this angle is very unflattering, but you know, it's like, I don't care, you know, because I feel more comfortable being ugly and stupid. <laughs> and, you know, trying to posit myself as black, but you know, this is not normal. This is just, this is bad. You know, 